Update 20 brought dozens of major changes to Fallout 76 and some of them are not exactly on the patch notes. Let me show you the highlights. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. It's time for the patch 20 overview. I've spent the past few days testing the new content and I must confess, this patch was quite dense and balanced at the same time. We got new content, we got lots of fixes and improvements as well. Even the bug and exploit fixes are really irrelevant and it's something you shouldn't ignore if you play Fallout 76 on a regular basis. Now, besides two brand new systems, we also got a bunch of new items and lots of improvements for existing features. Anyhow, I took my time to test everything you are about to see. I have also selected a few points that were not revealed by Bethesda and are not part of the patch notes. So without any further delays, let's get straight to the point, shall we? The season system is surely something you are well familiar with at this point, everyone is talking about it, mostly for bad reasons, but still. Anyhow, I recently made a dedicated video with all the essentials about this feature, so I will spare you from the boring rules and details here. Feel free to check it out if you want to know more. Anyhow, I will make a quick summary for the sake of this video. The season system is the new season pass for the game. It has 100 ranks and it lasts 10 weeks. It will be live until mid-September. You can access all the rewards for free, but there is also a paid option, which logs in about two weeks from now. This system reworked the daily and weekly challenges, and now you can access a wider variety of challenges, but instead of free atoms, you get rewarded with a new currency called SCORE, and that's exactly what you need to rank up and unlock new tiers. There are dozens of new and exclusive rewards to claim. Most challenges are pretty easy and straightforward to do, but some are quite challenging and time-consuming, such as most of the nuclear winter dailies. Sadly, it was expected. So you might want to stick to earning experience in adventure mode instead, which is a repeatable challenge by the way. The season's rewards include skins, cosmetics, camp and new items, as well as all currencies in game right now, such as scrip and even gold bullion. Wow. I think this sums up the entire system, so let's move on to the next point. Lunch boxes are part of the new season's rewards. There are a few tiers along the legendary journey with this new item, but what does it do exactly? Well, for starters, it gives you and any nearby players an experience gain buff. 25% appear lunch box, actually, and it seems to affect any nearby player. I couldn't test this properly, but someone not in my team used one and I got the buffs. So I know that works at least. Moving on, you and your friends can also get a random new effect from each lunchbox. There are 8 known effects for the time being. Some are visual effects, such as confetti splash on exploding enemies. Others are utility buffs, such as increased carry weight or decreased hunger. They are all pretty decent and welcome in my opinion. The curious fact here is that lunch boxes stack up to 4 for the experience buff, so up to 100 more experience gain, and for the random effects, I don't think there is a limit. I managed to get 7 effects at once, as you can see, and there are 8 in total, so you can get all of them if you want and play until they run out, I guess. This experience buff stacks with other buffs, such as the well-rested one from sleeping and food or drink experience gain buffs. So yeah, enjoy this new way to farm experience and level up even faster. Alright, besides the lunch boxes, we also have some more new uh, practical items. I invoke the ammo converter machine, which has been hated on since the very first hour of release. 
I can't really contest the hate here. This machine is literally a click simulator and a time sink. If you want any significant amount of ammo to use, you have to spend like half an hour clicking and clicking to convert wanted ammo into points and then points into the ammo you want. The interface is also laggy and buggy and it's just not a pleasant experience overall. And this system could be very user friendly actually, if only Bethesda added some higher values to the convert options. Anyhow, there are also Voltex supply crates with lots of junk items inside, similar to the ammo bags we had in Vault 94. There are also fireworks which work like a grenade, except they're not. They are purely visual effects for celebration purposes. Too bad they seem to be rare. Next, we have one of the best features Bethesda has came up with since the Wastelanders DLC went live. The public team system allows players to safely team up while enjoying different team buffs that can match different game styles. Again, I have a feature overview video for public teams already with all the details and essentials, so feel free to check it out if you don't want to miss a thing. You can join any public team with a free slot through the social menu and you can enjoy and upgrade buffs by bonding with your teammates. The system is really straightforward and simple to use, that's the main reason why I love it so much. Also, keep in mind if you are a solo player, you can always join a public team to enjoy the kind of buff you want anywhere you are. You don't have to strictly follow your teammates to get the buff to work, just saying. Public teams have different rules than the old and existing private teams. For instance, you can't build or access anything at your teammates' camps, even if they are in your friends list. If you wish to share an item, make sure to join a private team instead. Also, you cannot access locked doors or containers as typical of a private team. If you attempt to access a locked container at your teammates' camp while in a public team, you will become wanted. Ouch. Now, moving to PvP, the rules are also different. If you decide to turn pacifist off and engage into PvP with someone while in a public team, you can do it. However, you will not tag your teammates. Only you are a target if you do this. Your teammates must engage into PvP themselves if they wish to help you. This is a protection rule to prevent one single player from flagging the entire team and create further griefing scenarios that could lead to the death of the entire team during an event, for example. Even though the patch notes doesn't address this point, I have discovered that workshops also have different rules while in a public team. First, you no longer have free fast travel points to workshops, even if you or your teammates have claimed them. The workshops become normal fast travel icons in the map and the workshop icon with the resources and so on disappears. It's a bit weird, but if you leave the public team, the icons will become visible once again. Moreover, the same PvP rule I described in the previous point applies to workshop fights as well. If another player tries to contest your workshop, one of you will become a target. If any public teammates are around you, they will not be able to attack the contester or help you unless they engage first. So far, so good. It's working as intended, and that's a great thing. The Wendigo Colossus received a decent spawn boost. Right now, you can spawn one if you nuke a random encounter spawn and get lucky. Before update 20, the chances were about 6%. Now Bethesda increased the spawn rate to a flat 10%, which means you should be able to find more of these creepy creatures in the near future, especially while doing the Scorch Beast Queen if people also nuke the nearby groove, which hosts a conflict random encounter spawn as well. If you need any further details on how to spawn a Wendigo Colossus, don't you worry, I also have a guide, so don't be shy and help yourself. 
The god mod glitch has been a problem for a very long time now. Many players were using this exploit to take advantage in both PvP and PvE. Since they could achieve an invisible status, they could kill anything much faster and never die. With update 20, Bethesda fixed the most popular way to glitch yourself and enter gold mode, which was dying to energy weapons. At least something. However, it seems like there is another way to access the god mod glitch, which means the problem is not yet part of the past. There are several paths that lead to the same destination, one closed, but sadly, the other one is still open. It seems like Bethesda is finally fighting griefing methods. Apart from the god mod exploit fix, they also removed the radiation damage to neutral and friendly targets from the nuke mines. At long last. At first, I thought this change might not be live, it sounded too good to be true, but after testing, I can confirm it is working. And this griefing method, which was probably the number one, is now useless and it no longer works. Unless there is a new bug that will allow the rats to go through every now and then. Otherwise, griefers can no longer hurt you or bypass your pacifist mode with nuke mines. That's great. Bueno, bueno. But as they introduced some map interface improvements with the new patch as well, have you noticed the larger yellow dots? They indicate your teammates and they only display their names and levels if you go through with your mouse on top of the dots. Public team leaders got new icons with the respective team goal icons as well. They can be spotted right away when you open the map. Lastly, the Prevere received a brand new icon as well, which is basically a mole miner's face. I think these changes are very positive. The map looks more polished now. What do you think? Oh yeah, this point is extremely helpful. How many times have you struggled to understand what someone is saying in voice chat because they were too low? It happened to me all the time. It was rather annoying during events or when a player came to me asking me something and I was like, no idea what you just said, sorry. Now, you have an individual bar to boost the voice chat and it helps so much. It's incredible. I max it out and so far I haven't had any issues hearing people out. It really works, surprisingly. The auto-completed challenge bug has been part of the game for ages. Now it's supposed to be gone, but is it really? I can't confirm 100% that it is, even though I tested. This bug used to trigger for me when I did Nuclear Winter with unfinished daily and or weekly challenges. Now I did Nuclear Winter in the past two days, that's right, and I had unfinished challenges as well. They did not auto-complete. However, this doesn't mean the bug is totally gone. Before the update, the bug had a quite low chance to trigger, I would say about 20 to 30% for me, so it could still happen in the future. So guys, do let me know if you have experienced this bug after the update or not. Cheers! If you don't use energy weapons, then you probably didn't notice that Scorch Beasts can no longer be melted into ash or goo, at least according to Bethesda. These flying beasts are supposed to be immune to the melting process of the energy weapons. After testing around 10 times, I can confirm this change is indeed working. I was not able to melt any Scorch Beast with my Gatling Plasma or my Tesla. I tried really hard, but it never happened. Well, well, well. Beckett and the Raider Punk are now supposed to give you daily quests consistently. Before the update, I used to think my Beckett just didn't want to burden me with extra work because he would rarely give me a daily quest, maybe once or twice a week at most, but after the patch, he is being a good boy. He is giving me a daily quest every day. And that's a shock. I forgot to test the Raider Punk though, but at least Beckett seems to be fixed. He is back in business. Oh yeah. 
The Cannibal Park used to suffer from mutations before update 20 because I used to see people eating all sorts of enemies, like animals and creatures. Yeah, it was really buggy. To test this perk, I ate over a dozen of corpses and I checked many others for a potential eating option and the perk seems to be working fine now. I could only eat humanoids as intended like scorched, ghouls, super mutants and of course humans like the blood eagles or the cultists. Thumbs up to this fix. Who would tell that the Hardbergen perk didn't affect the Dutchness before update 20? I legit had no idea to be honest with you, but that's an issue of the past because everything is in order now. I did a quick comparison with and without the Hardbergen perk on and as you can see the prices are clearly affected by this Charisma perk. So it is working, enjoy the discounts and well purchase or don't purchase, do as you please. Smiley Smiley I did hear rumors that he could bug out in two ways. First, he wouldn't reset or secondly, he would sell you gold twice per week. Well, it seems like Smiley problems have come to an end. Maybe. I can't really test it and I never had any bugs with his NPC. He always had a weekly reset for me, every Monday actually. But I do believe he is no longer greedy since most of the fixes I have tested so far seem to be working. The transfer box bug was also very old, ancient actually. I always had it in every Scorch Beast Queen. I did, sometimes on other enemy bodies as well, never on containers though. I've killed hundreds of mobs in the past days and I haven't encountered this bug yet. Sadly, I didn't do a lot of queens so I can't say for sure if it is fixed or not. Nonetheless, the results clearly show improvement, so at least you can get that for granted. Oh, mamma mia, this bug together with the respawn window bug are my arc enemies, like it always happens whenever I die, it's like fate. But at least this one is not going to happen anymore because it is finally fixed. Actually, it is not fixed. They reversed the bug. Before, it would decrease your carry weight for some reason. That's why you would become over-encumbered after death, even though you weren't while alive. Now, if you die over-encumbered just by a little, you will be fine while dead and you can respawn. Why? Because this bug is now giving you some extra carry weight whenever you die. Don't ask me. I died several times and look at the carry weight. You can check it for yourself and take your own conclusions. Hey, at least the bug is now helping you respawning. I won't complain for sure. Another legendary bug that came to an end. Damn, it seems like Bethesda is really committing to fixing these old school bugs. And no, I'm not complaining. I'm just surprised, shocked actually. It feels unreal. But this one is also fixed. Before on PC you had to click several times to unequip and equip certain perks, even to select an attribute stack. Now everything seems to be working fine with just one click. The way it was always supposed to be. This change is one of these things that makes you wonder, why isn't this live since the release date? Ordering quests alphabetically is like the normal standard in the world, right? It's supposed to be the first organization rule. I wonder what order we even had before. Random order? Dev's preference order? I remember it being a mess, that's for sure. But hey, I'm glad it is like this now. Better later than never. The rustic water mill has been broken for a couple of months. Gladly it didn't take Bethesda long to get the mill to rotate again because they managed to break it really badly. It had no animation whatsoever, the sound was missing sometimes. I'm not sure what happened there. But now this atomic shop item seems to be back to normal. It also got another update to stop the animation sound from running when the mill is destroyed. 
Another exploit fix is related to the circus cage and the camp budget. Apparently, there was another glitch that allowed people to build more than the supposed limit. I'm not going to comment too much here because first, I don't even know how it worked and secondly, because it doesn't really affect other players or the economy of the game. So yeah, it was there, some people enjoyed it, now it's gone, well, it's life. Following the glitch fixing wave, Bethesda also solved a heavy exploit in Nuclear Winter, where some players were able to become immune to the firestorm and survive there. Now, this means that some matches would get dragged and kept hostage because legit players couldn't find the remaining survivors. Of course, they were hiding inside the storm somewhere. Dear lord, how do these people find such glitches? Well, it is gone now at least, so things should be a little bit better, despite all the cheaters, which is a problem still waiting for a resolution. Lastly, I found something really interesting. Enemies are now dropping floater grenades rather often. Before update 20, I don't remember ever getting a floater grenade from an enemy body. In the past few days, I got it from Scorched, from animals, even from super mutants. It cannot be a coincidence, right? Or did I suddenly get super lucky and triggered all the floater grenade drops in the game? I don't think so. They surely did a sneaky change in this department, and that's why people are now getting floater grenades like that. Update 20 was a pleasant surprise for sure. I know most of you are disappointed with the free atom reduction and the ammo converter machine, which is kinda bad, honestly. In general, you dislike the season system, but on the other hand, Bethesda is fixing a lot of things. Just look at how many bug and glitch fixes they covered in one single patch. Quite impressive, no? Probably one of the best performance updates we ever had. Anyway, these are the 25 major changes that went live with update 20. I hope you got to learn something new with this video. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching. The video is long enough already, so I will wrap things here. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and you can always support me even further if you want. The links are always below the video. Now, I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!